in this video we are going to discuss about introduction to database management system such as what is data what is information what is knowledge what is database what is database management system as well as what are the advantages of dbms and database applications and what are the best examples for dbms we are going to discuss all these concepts in this video first let us see what is data what is data data means it is a collection of facts collection of facts about anything about anything so it may be about student or it may be about employee or it may be about an university or it may be about hospital so it may be on anything so collection of facts about anything is called as data uh, data about student data about student includes so what is the major data of student roll number name marks etc okay so this is the uh, main data of the student data means unprocessed that means it is raw so data means unprocessed unprocessed set of inputs unprocessed set of inputs is called as data so that means data means it is raw it is original if you take the marks of a student let a class contains uh, uh, 70 students so the marks of all the 70 students is nothing but data of the student okay so data means marks of a class so marks of a class is nothing but data let a class contains 70 students information so those 70 students information is nothing but data now let us see information so this is very very important what is information information means meaningful data meaningful data is called as information meaningful data that means information means it is processed data information means processed data here we have uh, 70 student mocks are available okay let us assume that we have calculated average mocks average mocks of a class okay so calculating average mocks is nothing but information information or let us assume that uh, uh, we need to find uh, number of students who got uh, greater than 60 percentage of mocks okay so how many students are there who got greater than 60 percentage of mocks this is nothing but information information means performing operations on the data and retrieving the result according to our requirement so this is called as information various data means all the students information is data various information means meaningful data that means by using some commands we will retrieve the data so that is nothing but information now let us see the next terminology the next terminology is knowledge what is knowledge knowledge means making use of the information so using the information is nothing but knowledge so the students who got greater than 60 percent they are eligible for placement drives that means if their percentage is less than 60 then they are not eligible for the placement drives okay so that means here knowledge means we are making use of the information and uh, we are deciding the facts we are deciding some results based upon the information so this is about what is data what is information what is knowledge so knowledge means making use of the information and deciding the results okay now let us see about the next terminology that is database what is database what is database database means collection of related data database is collection of related data collection of related data if you take student database it contains roll number name some mocks 
Let the roll number is 1. Some name is Ramesh. Let the marks are 95. Okay. So why it is called as related data? Because there is a relation between roll number and name and marks. By using roll number, we can retrieve the name. As well as by using the name, we can retrieve the roll number. By using mocks also, we can retrieve roll number and name. So that means all the fields here are interrelated. So that's why we can call database as collection of related data. So there is a relation between one field to the remaining fields. Uh, let us see some examples, uh, database applications. Let us see some applications of the database, database applications. If you take any university, any university is an example for the database. Why? Because in university, we have to maintain uh, students information. We have to maintain faculty information. We have to maintain courses information, non-teaching faculty information. So we need to maintain all this information. So for that purpose, we use the database. Next, uh, hospitals. So hospitals is also an example for the database application. Why? Because in hospital, we need to maintain list of doctors, list of patients, list of diseases. So everything we need to maintain. So for that purpose, we use the database. If you take railway, railway, so railway reservation. So we have to maintain what here also. We have to maintain the schedule information. Okay. We have to maintain the schedule information. So for that also, we require the database. Okay. Now let us see about, uh, likewise, uh, we can have uh, several applications, some uh, aeroplane uh, uh, reservation, okay. So likewise, we can have a number of applications. Now let us see about DBMS. So DBMS, in short, we can, DBMS stands for what? Database Management System. Database Management System. In short, we can call as DBMS. So what is a DBMS? DBMS is a software. It is a software, software, which is designed, which is designed to store and manage the data, to store and manage the data. So this is the major advantage of the DBMS. DBMS means a software. We know what is a software. Software means a program. Program means a collection of instructions. So DBMS means a large program. It is a software. So why we are using the DBMS? In order to store the database and manage the database. So manage the database means we can perform several operations on the database. So why we are using the DBMS? The primary goal of DBMS is convenient to use. Convenient as well as efficiency. So it should be DBMS should be convenient to the use. So it is very, very easy to use the DBMS and efficient. It is very, very efficient. Why? Because we can perform the operations very, very easily, very, very efficiently on the DBMS using several commands. Okay. So that is about what is DBMS and what are the goals of DBMS. It should be convenient as well as efficient. Okay. Now let us see the best examples for the DBMS. The best examples for the DBMS are Oracle. So Oracle is the most commonly used DBMS and Microsoft SQL Server. Microsoft SQL Server is also the best examples for the DBMS. And we have MySQL. So MySQL is also best example for the DBMS. We have DB2. So these four are the most commonly used databases. Okay. So this is about what is data, what is information, what is knowledge, what is database and database applications? What is DBMS and uh, what is DBMS and the best examples of the DBMS? Now let us see about advantages of the DBMS. Totally mainly we have seven advantages are there. Let us see all the advantages one by one. The first advantage is data independence. So what is data independence? Here the developer of the application doesn't have to know about how the data is actually stored in the hard disk or the developer of the application doesn't have to worry about how the data is represented internally in the hard disk. So ma mainly two points. So the developer of the application doesn't have to know about how the data is actually stored in the hard disk as well as the developer of the application 
doesn't have to worry about how the data is internally represented. Why? Because here mainly here we have uh, two types of levels are there. The first level is physical level. The second level is logical level. Mainly we have uh, two levels are there. Physical level and logical level. Physical level means the data, the data of the database, the actual data, the rule number one, Ramesh, some Ramesh and uh, rule number, name and mocks. So one Ramesh 90. So that is nothing but actual data. Actual data means physical level. Whereas logical level means logical structure. So that means whether it is a number or whether it is where care or which constraints we imposed. That means whether it is primary key or unique or foreign key or candidate key. So that is nothing but logical uh, level. So here the advantage is we can change database schema at one level without changing database schema at the second level. So that means we can change database schema at physical level without changing database schema at logical level and vice versa. We can change database schema at logical level without changing database schema at physical level. So this is called as independence. Why? Because uh, without uh, modifying the second level, we can update the one level, first level. Okay. So this is called as data independence. And the second one is efficient data access. So with the help of the DBMS, we can store the data as well as we can perform the operations very, very efficiently using several commands. So we have create command, insert command, delete command, update command, drop command. So likewise, several commands are there. So by using those commands, we can perform the operations very, very efficiently. And the next one is data integrity. So data integrity means data in the DBMS must be valid. For that purpose, we have to enforce the integrity constraints. We will discuss about integrity constraints later. Integrity constraints. We have to enforce integrity constraints on the data. If you take the date of birth, so date of birth can never be future date. Okay, It should be past date only. So that is nothing but integrity constraint. If you impose the primary key, then it should contain what? It should be unique and it should not contain, it should contain some value. So that is nothing but imposing the integrity constraints. So that is called as data integrity. So for integrity, what we have to do? We have to maintain the integrity constraints. So the best example is data of birth. It never be future date. Okay. Now let us see about data consistency. What is data consistency? The best example for the data consistency is transferring money between two bank accounts. We can transfer money between two bank accounts only if those two accounts are updated correctly. If those are not updated correctly, then it is inconsistent. Consistent means those two accounts must be updated correctly. So then only we can perform the operation. And the next one is enable concurrent access. So concurrent means multiple users can access the database simultaneously. Multiple employees can access the database simultaneously and update their information according to their requirement. So employee one can update his details. Employee two can update her details. Okay. So those things will be done parallelly, continuously, concurrently, simultaneous access. And the next one is ensures data recovery. Suppose if the database crashes, if the database server crashes, then we should not worry about that. Very, very easily we can recover our data. So that is the advantage of the DBMS. If the database crashes, then, then also there is no problem. We can recover our data very, very easily. And the last one is enable data security. So we can enable data security to the DBMS very, very efficiently. Let we have three databases. So database one, database two, database three. Let we have two users, user one, user two. So we can enforce some data security. Who can access which data? So for example, user one can access only database one, whereas user two can access all the three databases. So likewise, we can enforce some uh, security. We can enable data security. So this is about uh, introduction to database management system.